Life is a gift. You are a gift to God and you are a gift to us. And we're so glad you're joining us this Monday on Hope Today. I am here with Amanda and Tom. And Tom, we're going to talk about a very delicate but important conversation today. Yes, it is. You know, I have to tell you guys something. When my, when my grandfather passed away, I was 15 years old. And we, I was standing at the viewing by his casket very, uh, as just as we had opened the doors. And a lady from our church, an older lady, came in and said, this is a debt we all have to pay as she was standing there. I didn't know. My 15-year-old mind couldn't really comprehend what that meant exactly. Well, Robert Walgamuth uh, reminds us, he's gonna be with us in just a minute. He reminds us that since our first parents, Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, death is a reality for us. It's an appointment we all must keep, but Jesus came to eliminate the fear of death. And Robert will share his own personal story of facing that fear and also many practical and important ways we can prepare our family for this, our ultimate journey. Uh, I know like, uh, you know, Monday morning or Monday uh, talking about this subject may be hard, Amanda, but it, you know, as we're prepared, all that fear goes away. That's right. I just, I believe that God knows the people sitting on the other end of the camera, which is you. And he knows that some of you are walking through this season right now. So he cared enough to connect us with Robert because this is an important topic to talk about just like grieving is. There's many different things in this life that we endure and we cover a lot of those and we always try to give hope into every area no matter what you're walking through. So you're gonna find that today and if you know someone who's walking through this right now, please give them a call. Tell them to watch or let them know about our YouTube channel and sign on at their convenience so that way they can be comforted and that removal of the fear of death. Oh, death, where is your sting? That's yeah. right. Ooh, you know, just like Jesus. recently, uh, my, my husband and my mother-in-law, like they lost my, her father, my, uh, my husband lost his grandfather. And so one thing I just wanna share, and if Mama Brenda, you're watching, cause it's such a beautiful thing is that she shared with us. I mean, I remember we FaceTimed, there was like a, like Jake had a, an opportunity that the last day that his father, I mean, his grandfather was here on earth that he had a chance to say, hey, grandpa, we love you. I remember at our wedding, like grandpa was getting down and dancing, one of my favorite memories of him <laughs> and my mother-in-law that she brought in a worship team like just to come in and this they sang praises unto God and then that later like at like it was like four in the morning I, I, it was early in the morning that he passed away but I mean just to prepare him well to transition into heaven it was such a beautiful story and so just even hearing with my family just like what they like walking through and how you know my mother-in-law had to like care, take care of her dad and different things and I've watched with my own parents like I've seen my like my grandmother just different things I think we've all walked through these seasons it's a topic I know a lot of us don't really Really, it's hard to like face when you see a loved one that, that is in a situation like this, but it is a great hope that we know through Jesus Christ. For those that are in Jesus, for those that have given our lives to him, we know that our eternal resting place is in heaven, which is a beautiful place. Haven't been there yet, but I know one day we'll all be joined there together. And I hope there's a big buffet. We're all able to like dance with Jesus and love one another. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's exactly the way it's going to be. You know, if we're honest with ourselves, facing death, it can be a very scary thing and not necessarily for ourselves because we know we'll be with Jesus in heaven, like Sydney just said, if we believe and accept him as our savior. The fear may be for our loved ones we leave behind. In Robert Walgamuth's new book, Finish Line, he provides a new way to think about end of life preparation that will help you take care of your loved ones so you can approach your own finish line with hope, joy, and peace. Robert, welcome to Hope Today. Oh, it's so great to be with you guys. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Sydney and Amanda. What a privilege to be with you this morning, this beautiful Monday morning. <laughs> well, we're so glad that you've joined us. Now, uh, you know, it's an interesting book that you've written here, an interesting topic. Could you tell us about your own journey, uh, your family's journey and your personal journey mm -hmm. that, that sparked sure. the, the, the whole concept of this book? Well, like, uh, like all of you guys, people listening and watching, we all face death. Uh, we all have stories of loved ones who have died. Uh, in um, 2012, Valentine's Day 2012, my late wife was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. It was a complete surprise. That's a, it's a very stealth cancer. And so we began the journey. 30 months later, Bobby stepped into heaven. Um, and I had the joy of being her primary caregiver. I mean, because I was healthy enough to be able to do that, why would I invite somebody I didn't know to, to be next to her, to be with her? In fact, all the way to the very end, and I tell the story in the book, 
my daughters came in. I have two daughters, 50 and 47. And they were, the three of us were together, four of us were together in the living room, the hospital bed in the living room. And uh, actually, Bobby turned to me and she was wide awake. I'm telling you, she was wide awake. She turned to me, she took me by the shirt, she pulled my face in right next to hers. She said, I love you so much. And she died. The, the hospice nurse was there. She had just been there for a few minutes. She put her hand on Bobby's chest and she said, she's not breathing, she's gone. So I tell that story because Bobby's death, the courage that Bobby exhibited the 30 months of her dealing with cancer eliminated. I know that sounds crazy. Eliminated my fear of death. Uh, you know, the scripture says, in fact, her favorite go-to verse was 1 Corinthians 2.9. It's amazing. Listen to this. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God had prepared for those who love him. So, like, when you're in, you're in the car and you're headed for vacation, the fact that you're going to a place that everybody can't wait to be with or be there, the, the joy your kids are experiencing in the back seat on their way, the destination has everything, everything to do with how you feel about the journey and how you feel about death. So my friend Randy Elkhorn was kind enough to give the, uh, the endorsement. He wrote, of course, the, the seminal work on heaven. So knowing where we're going and being ready for heaven makes all the difference. Wow, I mean, it certainly does. So uh, I appreciate you being open with us and sharing that very touching story of, of Bobby's. Uh, in fact, you, you even mentioned that at her memorial service, you had a video that you uh, had taken unbeknownst to her. Could you just tell us a little bit about that? Because I thought it was so touching. Well, I, I shot a video from the balcony of our home in Florida and Bobby loved to walk and she loved to sing. And she's singing, when we walk with the Lord. John Samus wrote this in 1887, trust and obey. Mm -hmm. So I actually took that video and then at the end of her funeral service in November of 14, across the screen on a black screen were the white letters Except a kernel of wheat fall into the ground and die, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. That's John 12, 24. And Jesus spoke those words. And, and specifically, he was talking about himself. Imagine the harvest that resulted from the death of Jesus Christ. But it's a challenge to us that, that when we die, there will be a harvest based on the seed that is planted uh, our own death, the things that we've done during our life will produce a harvest after we're gone. That's a great challenge for all of us. Boy, it really is. And I uh, appreciate, again, you being open and sharing with our family here. Um, so this prompted a lot of uh, different things uh, that you uh, uh, have in the book of a practical nature, but you remarried uh, and uh, and then you went through your own challenges. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that as well? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, that. So, yes, uh, 2020. Who wants to do re uh, redo 2020? <laughs> I don't. Nobody does. The world doesn't. So on top of the pandemic, I was diagnosed with two completely unrelated cancers, first melanoma and then lymphoma. So I went through the chemo, lost my hair, but... This is amazing, isn't it? In God's providence, I had watched my late wife go through this very thing, chemo, all of that. And I thought, I can do this. I mean, so Bobby's death gave me courage to face it. But yes, I had my own excursion with, um, with cancer. And my precious wife, she was single for 40, 46 years. Did I say 46? 56 years. Never married. And she marries this guy and her life changes. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine like whiskers in the sink for the first time in her whole life? Um, but Nancy was, was my companion. And if you're going to get sick, be married to Nancy Lee DeMoss. I'm telling you, she is amazing. She's brilliant. She loves Jesus. She helped. I never went to a doctor that either Nancy was there or we were FaceTiming with the doctor. So she kept track of everything. If you've gone through this and you have, and you don't have an advocate, it's a huge challenge. But if you've got an advocate, a colleague, 
somebody who helps you keep track of all the medications and the doctors and their names. I had a dozen doctors. And Nancy took care of all of this. So what a joy to be married to Nancy. We've been married now. Actually, we count months. So last week, we celebrated our 93rd anniversary. Aww. On the 14th of every month, we celebrate an anniversary. We did this to catch up to our friends who have been married like for 30 years or 30. So we've passed all of them. We don't know anybody that's been married 93 years. <laughs> that's but great. that's just part of the celebration. We love it, and God has been so good to us. God is definitely good. And uh, let me ask you, as a lot of the book is about practical things, just being prepared in various ways. What would you say? I mean, th there are several points that you have. What, what's the most important thing that people can do? Obviously, a relationship with Jesus Christ is most important. But what would you uh, say is like the most important thing that you can do in kind of the nuts and bolts framework, you even have a mm. chapter called Nuts and Bolts. I do, I do. 30%, only 30% of us have a will, for example. So that means 70% of us, the probate is gonna figure out what to do with your assets. That is, that is stunning, right? I mean, it's hard to believe, but it's true. So I talk about four pallbearers that you need to have a pastor, you need to have a physician at the ready. You know, I, I punch a button on my phone and it's my doctor, my doctor, he's amazing. A financial planner, somebody who helps you manage the future and an accountant who knows the numbers. Those four people, I call them your pallbearers. You need to have them. And you don't, this is, we're not talking about wealth. We're not talking about managing your estate and all kinds of property and so forth. But those four people in your life are critical to set up at this point. Because, it, as I said, you, you're, you and I are going to die. It's in, the, it's in the book. So the, sub, the subtitle of the book says it all. Dispelling fear, finding peace, and preparing for the end of your life. In that, and I, I love the practicality of that. I know that uh, having gone through my wife's parents passing, my parents passing, and, and, and seeing the, the preparations they did be very, very helpful in, in, the, in getting us through those times. It's so, so important. But let me ask you about a, a different kind of topic. You have a chapter called Saying Grace uh, in here and uh, mm -hmm. talking about blessing others. Could you just speak on that topic for us and the importance of it? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, it is funny, isn't it? You know, I'm, in a, I'm on the tram at DFW and I sneeze and the guy across from me says, God bless you. I'm thinking, wow, thank you. What a nice thing to say. Well, blessing is a real deal. In fact, I encourage readers to actually speak a blessing to their progeny, to their children, to their grandchildren. It, they'll never forget it. In fact, I have five grandchildren and one grandchild, grandson-in-law. And I've actually written in the book just to help people kind of prime the pump of giving a blessing to your children. They'll never forget it. So um, blessing your children and go through the Old Testament and discover that blessing is a real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's given as a gift from the person who is about to die to the person who's surviving. I tell the story of my grandfather who right before his death put his hand on my shoulder and gave me a blessing. I'll never forget it. So we, I talk about how important it is as you get older, as you head towards your own finish line, to bless, to bless your children, to bless your mate, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, if the Lord has given you those as well. So again, just nuts and bolts. You said it, Tom. Just things that we forget sometimes until it's too late. So getting all this squared away before we step into heaven is a really, really important thing. Amen. Robert, thank you so much for just sharing your heart. I know we're blessed, you know, just to hear you and see how you have trust the Lord and obeyed him through every season. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a beautiful image and example for all of us. But I was just thinking for that one that might be listening who does not yet have that relationship, would you share the good news of the gospel with them today? Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Amanda. What a wonderful question. January 2nd, uh, 2023, Nancy and I are watching Monday Night Football, and a Buffalo Bill 
a defender made a tackle and dropped dead. Do you remember it? Damar oh, Hamlin was his okay. name. And every player on the field went to their knees. And it's, it's fun because the um, former quarterback for the Bills, uh, uh, Bill, uh, Jim, Jim Kelly, his wife, uh, Jill, is a very good friend, knows Jesus, loves Jesus. So we were in, con in contact immediately. And here's, here's the point. When, when we're facing death, the gospel takes on a whole new meaning. Mm -hmm. Knowing Christ is something that everybody is interested in. ESPN, there was an announcer on ESPN who said, everybody's talking about praying for Damar Hamlin. Let's pray right now, mm -hmm. right, right on television. I mean, talk about something that's never happened before. But when, when you're facing death, when I'm facing death, the truth of the gospel, the power of the gospel takes on a whole new meaning. So Jesus died and rose again so that we did not, don't need to fear the same fate, the death that is eminent for us. So uh, this, this is all part of dispelling the fear of, of our own death, knowing the veracity, knowing the truth of the gospel changes everything. We have something to hang on to. And, and I talk in the book about being ready that is knowing Christ before this happens to us, you know, the anticipation of heaven changes everything. And the truth of the gospel, Jesus came, lived, died, and rose again for our salvation to bring us to faith in him. Yeah, thank you so much, Robert, for sharing that. And if you just listened to that and you want to give your life to Jesus, give us a call on our prayer line at 888-665-4483. We have a prayer partner who will connect with you and lead you to the next steps. And one thing, Robert, you just mentioned Damar Hamlin. Damar is actually from Pittsburgh, and it's kind of apropos because the Steelers and the Buffalo Bills did a preseason game on Saturday that they played. We actually, the Steelers actually won. But uh, we just, just want, yeah, amen. We just wanted to, like, mention that because we were talking about Damar Hamlin and just the amount of prayer and just in that situation, that life and death situation because so many people we will find ourselves in those moments and it's important that we right. know where we're going and with Jesus and Tom do you have any thoughts? yeah when you know Jesus death is a wonderful thing I know that sounds crazy yeah. but how how cool God bless you Sydney yeah well uh, Robert is there anything that maybe you didn't have the opportunity to get in the book I mean you put a lot in here I, I love how you ended you talk about saying I love you to people now and I think that's so important. Maybe you could speak on that a little bit for us. Oh, yes. One of my favorite stories is two men, actually pastors, walking down the sidewalk together, and one of them drops dead. These guys have been friends their whole adult lives, drops dead on the sidewalk, and his buddy kneels down next to him and starts pounding on his chest. And people around thinking that he's, like, bringing him back to life. The man is calling out, and he said, don't die until I tell you how much I love you. So I have, I have had great joy over the last, whatever, 10 years. When I sign off a memo, even a text, I tell people I love them. So that's, don't, don't get tired of, of saying that. People don't get tired of hearing it. So um, God's love shining through me, whether it's at the grocery store or texting a friend that I know and love, say I love you. Say it every time you get a chance. Amen. There's not enough. We don't say it enough. The book is called Finish right. Line by Robert Walgamuth, uh, subtitled Dispelling Fear, Finding Peace, and Preparing for the End of Your Life. Again, not maybe a topic we th uh, talk about, we think we talk about on Monday morning, but you did a great job in sharing it with us. Thank you for sharing <laughs> your story, you. Robert. Thank you, friends. What a joy to be with you. God bless you. Well, again, uh, I want to just thank Robert Walgamuth for that. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. No matter your age or circumstances, God wants you to move forward. Join best-selling author and teacher Dr. David Jeremiah in a masterclass, revealing how to live fearlessly. You'll discover that it's never too late to find your purpose. Dr. David Jeremiah reveals powerful ways for people of any age to live a life that's meaningful. Inside Forward, you'll uncover strong Bible teaching coupled with incredible real-life stories and practical biblical insight. Learn how God wants to expand your dreams, give you divine direction, equip you with tools to overcome fear, and much more. 
Request your copy of this life-changing book when you support Cornerstone Television. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Find airtimes for Turning Point with Dr. David Jeremiah at ctvn.org. Donate and request his book, Forward. Thank you for your partnership with Cornerstone TV. Wow, what a meaningful interview we just had with Robert and hearing him even say those words, I love you. They're such important words and we love you here at Cornerstone. We are so thankful to have you sitting on the other side of the screen or your phone, however you're watching. But we just wanna thank you for being a part of our family here. Those words are very important. They just, they ring within my spirit. I just, the love of God is reckless. It goes after everyone. Not one of us is not seen by our Heavenly Father. But we love to turn to the Word. And Robert did mention this scripture earlier, but it comes from 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. It says, But as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human heart has conceived. God has prepared these things for those who love him. We encourage you to, to be in love with your heavenly father. Be in love with him. Give him everything. Surrender everything to him because there is no one who's going to love you back better than Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen, Sid. I just think that even this like this topic and this conversation just reminds me of like there was something else Robert that said that really stuck out about um, the scripture in, in, in the gospels where it talks unless the seed falls to the ground and dies it won't produce much fruit and one thing I remember when my grandmother granny she's in heaven I remember that when I, I was in college I was in my senior year of college and I'll never forget like I was so I was kind of upset because there was a lot of things that are going I'm about to graduate I thought she was going to be at my graduation she used to live with my parents and she was staying at this like facility like we thought she was gonna recover and be fine and then she was gone it was like the most unexpected death like in my life and I remember I was shattered and I was devastated and I didn't understand why and I remember there was a point like I was living in I was living in a studio apartment in Philadelphia Temple and I remember just God like spoke to me about why my grandmother had to leave was for our family and the harvest that it was going to produce. And I can literally just see from that moment when my granny passed away has been a huge turning point with my faith and just all these different things just started unraveling and folding in my life. And I just want to encourage you, you know, if you're watching and maybe you're that grandmother or you're that person, you're hitting that older age and you're concerned maybe about your family. Let me just encourage you with this is that I can honestly attest and say that the people that have gone on to be with Jesus, I've seen it time and time again in my family. I see the abundance of freedom root of what has come out and it is absolutely amazing. So just want to encourage you with that today that if you are at that season in your life and you know that you know your journey is coming to an end soon or you know that you know you're about to be on the other side of heaven, be encouraged about with your family and with your loved ones, if your children and your grandchildren, there is such a blessing that does come when it comes to going on the other side and being with Jesus. <laughs> you know, I love a quote that's in the book. It's from uh, uh, the evangelist D.L. Moody. And I've heard this quote before, but I, I just want to read it to you. It says, this is him speaking. He says, someday you will read in the papers that D.L. Moody of East Northfield is dead. Don't you believe a word of it? At that moment, I shall be more alive than I am now. And isn't that true? Isn't that the point? Isn't that what the, the gospel is about? It's about life. You know, have you made that commitment to Jesus Christ where you have opened the door of your life and you have uh, invited him in? and said, Lord, I need you in my life. You know, we all know that we need something. We all know that we need a, 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 a part, part of our life. There's, there's part that we just can't seem to figure out. There's things that we just can't get past. But when we realize that Jesus Christ is the reason that we exist, that God himself has created a need for us deep within, uh, a need for Christ deep within us, we know that we, we, we come to that place where we say, God, I, I need you. I need you in my life. So it's very simple. It's just uh, uh, hard to do. It's <laughs> simple but hard. And that is that we need to lay down the lordship of our own life that we've taken up mm -hmm. and say, Lord Jesus, come and be my Lord and Master and Savior. Mm -hmm. Sit on the throne of my life and, and be that one that is uh, guiding me and leading me. 
come into my life, forgive me of my sins. Because that's the, the key there is our sins have made a, 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 a breakage, a barrier between us and God. But Jesus paid the penalty of those sins on the cross that you and I can be forgiven and we can experience new life in Christ. So why don't you do that today? Just say that simple prayer. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Be merciful to me. I know that Jesus died for me. Come into my life and be my Savior and Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed a prayer like that or if you just prayed with me, call our prayer partners and let them know. They'll rejoice with you and they'll encourage you to follow after Christ. Amen. I just love he brought up that song, Trust and Obey. And I think through all the seasons of life, he has set a beautiful example for each one of us that no matter what you're walking through, trust the Lord. He will never fail you. Mm. Amen. He will never, ever fail you. And so we are just so glad that you went on this journey with us that we were talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, that we were just talking about the idea of life and death. And just, we are just so grateful that you've joined us. And we hope that you have an eternal perspective because with an eternal perspective, everything changes. It doesn't seem, sometimes in the moment, we're not saying that death isn't, can be scary and it can't be hard and there's gonna be tears that are gonna be shed. There's gonna be mourning and it's healthy to grieve. But I think what the one thing that we can all have comfort in is there's nothing like standing at a funeral. And when you see your loved one in the casket and you know where they are and you know that they are on the streets of gold, they're in heaven, they're eating with Jesus, they're dancing with Jesus. And because all of us, I think our heart is, is we want even you to experience this. When you come face to face with Jesus, you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. There is no words like that. And that is the hope that we have in Jesus, that we know, yes, this is a journey and this is the life that we're on, but we know that there's an afterlife, that we know that there's more beyond this. And so we just encourage you today to really to just seek the Lord while he still may be found, to put your hope and your trust into Jesus and know that he is guiding you, he is with you, he is walking with you, and he loves you with an everlasting love, a price that we could not pay. It is all Jesus. We love you. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, offering an alternative approach to anxiety as a path to our best selves in Christ. Author Curtis Chang encourages those who struggle with worry and explains how anxiety can be viewed as an opportunity for spiritual growth. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.